Hey, hi. In the first part, we understood about the importance and the need for student visa. Today, I'm going to talk about how to prepare yourself for the US student visa. Remember, this US visa series is very important because it gives you the key to open that door which you have been banging for so long and you have not been able to get any answers. So this is the answer to your question, how to prepare yourself for the US student visa. Listen to the entire video and do comment and like and subscribe this video. Hit the bell icon so that you get the new notifications because this video will come on every Thursday and you don't want to miss this one. Hey, hi, I'm Richard Lasciado, MBA with 22 years of study abroad constant experience. And in this US visa series, I'm going to share all those secrets that I have, which has helped me to get a visa success rate of 90% or above. I am sure if you use these techniques, you will be able to get your visa success as well. So let's look at today's presentation, which is about how to prepare for US study visa. Now, this is again, very, very important because what people don't understand or what students don't understand is, they are just looking at the final part, which is the visa part, and they are not taking care of the things that has to be done to help you get US visa. So if you have not taken precaution in the beginning, and in the last moment you decide to run, you fall short and US visa, you know, officer denies your visa. So if you want to get your visa success, then start from the beginning, which is preparation. Uh, so let's talk about how to prepare for US student visa. Now, complete all admission requirements. Complete all admission requirements. I'm sure you must have seen a lot of posters, banners, says no ILTS, no TOEFL, no uh, get admission in US, get visa in US. Now remember, it looks very, very attractive when you see these posters and you feel that you have got the key, but the key is fake because these students don't get visas. Why? Because the US visa officer treats these students, students as potential immigrants. They believe, the visa officer believes that once you got, get US visa, you will not come back to your own country. So all these posters, odings, and everywhere where you see no ILTS, no this, no that, so all these shortcuts doesn't work in life. If you want success, follow the path. And the path is to complete all admission requirements that is required for US universities. First, basically you need to apply for a full-time program to be eligible for a student visa. Now, these programs are academic programs. So if you're looking for biotechnology, computer science, architecture, management, information system, any other program, fine arts, all those are academic programs. There are language training programs, which is the English language programs. But if you are from a country like India, where English is widely spoken, then if you apply for this type of program, you will not get a visa. You will be treated as a potential immigrant. If you are countries where English is not spoken widely in your home country, and then you apply for a language training program, you have a better chance of getting visa. So though the program is available to all, it doesn't mean that the visa success for each of the program is same. So choose your program wisely. Then you have vocational programs. Vocational programs are carpentry, beautician, plumbing, any vocation-based programs. Now, when I did my first part, I just talked about F1 visa. There are also M1 visa. M1 visa is more vocational based visa. And there is also a J1 visa, which basically, uh, which is a trainee visa, uh, whereby uh, uh, people who have done, let's say hospitality, who have completed one year of hospitality, who want to study in US, can go for one year of program and then they can do that training and you know work as an intern and come back. 
So these are the other types of visa which I have not covered in this because I'm focusing on just F1 visa. So there is a vocational program as well. Now to apply and to get visa, you need to apply to reputed universities and not to any universities. In US, there are more than 4,000 plus universities. So not necessary that all universities are good. So you need to check the university accreditations, ranking, location, students, feedbacks, go on the student university Facebook, check all details before you want to apply to a particular university. See that, that the university that you applied is good university. I, as I mentioned, no shortcuts. Some universities may accept you with whatever profile you have, but that university may not help you in getting visa. Also, there are many cases when basically these universities are blacklisted and the student face problems. To avoid all such courses, all such problems, apply to reputed universities because it helps you to increase your visas. Take TOEFL, IELTS, PT scores and score good in this test. This is very important. You know, don't go for those odings which says no IELTS, no TOEFL, no PT. Don't go for those odings because even if you these universities are ready to accept you, the visa officer will ask you what's your TOEFL score, what's your IELTS score, and if the visa officer finds missing, the visa officer most likely will reject you as a potential immigrant, and you don't want to take chances with your visas. Never take chance on your visa. Because once you get a visa refusal, a denial, then getting visa for the next time could be a little more difficult. The first time when your passport is blank, that's the best time to get your visa. So don't go for shortcuts again, please. Take standardized test. Now, if you're applying for an undergraduate, which is a bachelor's program, take SAT 1. If you are applying for a management program, take GMAT. If you are applying for a graduate non-management program, take GRE, like computer science, electrical engineering, GRE, MBA, GMAT, undergraduate bachelor's in computer science or BBA, SAT, SAT 1. So this is the minimum test that you should take because when you take this test, it tells the visa officer that you are a genuine student. How the visa officer is going to ask you a question. What's your SAT score? What's your GRE score? What's your GMAT score? And when you have a score to tell, it tells the visa officer that you are genuine. But if you are going to say, I've not taken my SAT, I've not taken my GRE, I've not taken my GMAT, it tells the visa officer that probably you are a potential immigrant. So chances of visa are low when you don't take the standardized test. Apply for scholarships. Universities have scholarships, apply for the scholarships. There could be some universities which have early deadlines for which are called scholarship deadlines. Apply for those early deadlines. When you are taking SAT 1, you apply for scholarship because you get scholarships on SAT 1, so good academics. Apply for those scholarships. Some universities have external scholarship application forms. Fill those scholarship application forms. Apply for those scholarships. Because scholarship is available for international students on merit basis. M-E-R-I-T, merit. So merit is the word. And when you are merit-based, it means you are genuine. It means you are a good student. And that helps you to improve your scholarship chances, visa chances. Apply and get admission from SVSEVP schools. Okay, those are the schools that are authorized to give I-20. Apply to sufficient number of universities, not just one or two, but at least five universities. When you apply to sufficient number of universities, it tells the user officer that you have applied to sufficient number, means you have applied to a reasonably good universities. And since universities admissions are not guaranteed, you have applied to five, which means that you are a genuine student. If you just apply to one or two, the visa officer may treat you as a potential immigrant saying that you may have not applied to good universities or you have not taken risk of applying to better universities and you have just taken safe universities 
So he may treat you as a potential immigrant. Also, see that you correspond with the university officials. See that you correspond with the university officials. Because when you do correspondence, it tells the visa officer that you are genuine. The visa officer may ask you a question, have you done any correspondence? You can say, yes, I have done correspondence with Mr. So-and-so, university uh, uh, admission officer or administrative officer or whoever they are about so-and-so things, details. I have corresponded with Professor So-and-so about my program details, course content, research facilities. So when you do correspondence, it tells the visa officer that you have genuine. When you're going to such a far country and you are spending so much, would you not like to correspond with this university and check if all the details are right? If the poor university is good, if the program is good, if that everything that you want is matching to your profile. And if you are doing that, then you are a genuine student. Have any sufficient finance? See that you have sufficient finance to cover up your educational cost. Now, minimum requirement is one year of tuition, accommodation, living expenses as per your I-20. But that's minimum. It's not sufficient. Sufficient would be if you're going for a master's program, at least it should cover 1.5 years of your tuition, accommodation, and living cost. If you're applying for a bachelor's program, then it should at least cover at least 2.5 to 3 years of your bachelor's program. Then the visa officer feels that you have sufficient funds so that you balance one year of fund for your bachelor's or 1.5 years of your bachelor's or six months of your master's, you have some time, your parents have some time to arrange the funds and you would be treated as a genuine student. So these funds have to be maintained in the saving bank account. And it is important how you maintain this saving bank account. You cannot put all the funds just a day prior or a week prior to the visa and show to the visa officer that you have funds. You need to carry six months of bank statement. So try to maintain your bank balance in such a way that it feels that you have been making provision for quite some time and slowly and slowly you have developed this bank balance. Besides your bank balance, okay, which may cover you basically, let's say two years of a bachelor's program or 1.5 or two, two, two years of your bachelor's program, or at least minimum one year of your master's program, okay? You can show other investments, which is your fixed deposit, poster saving, shares, bonds, debentures, to show that you have balanced funds. You have made provision for balanced funds. So that the visa officer is convinced that you have sufficient funds and these funds can be used for your education. The next is about who is your sponsor. Now, if your sponsor is your parents, then it does help for your visa purpose. I have seen some of them say that it is not necessary that your parents have to be sponsored. I uh, would feel that parents are ideal for being a sponsor because they are your parents, they feel responsible towards you and that's why they are sponsoring you. So the visa officer finds a good reason of their sponsoring and you coming back to your home country. If your brother or sister are also sponsoring you, then also it's basically a good reason for you to come back because it shows that you have a good strong tie in your home country. But if your uncle, auntie are sponsoring you, then sometime the visa officer will ask you whether your uncle has kids. And if you say yes, then the visa officer will ask you why is he not sponsoring his kids? Does he not have an obligations to them? And if you say no, then you basically say they will try to find out how close you are to the uncle and why they sponsoring you. So having parents as a sponsor or brother and sister as a sponsor, brother or sister siblings as a sponsor is a good sponsor. Then having your uncle or auntie as a sponsor. I'm not saying no to no no to uncle and auntie because there can be a case where you know you may not be able to arrange your own funds. In worst case situation, then you will have to have them as a sponsor and you will have to prove to the visa officer why they are sponsoring your education. So if your sponsor, whoever your sponsors are, they have to show IT returns of last three years. This is important because you have shown their back balance saying that they have, let's say, 25 lakhs of funds. So when they ask you what's your sponsor's income and you say your sponsor's income is three lakhs, the visa officer will seriously doubt on the sponsor that how come a three year lakh per annum 
you know, IT return, sponsor and get a bank balance of 25 lakhs. So he may reject you. So that is where the IT return is connected. So if your bank balance is 25 lakhs, the for sponsor's income could be around 18 to 25 lakhs, or maybe 15 lakhs. So that he has done sufficient saving over a period of time and he can sponsor your education. If the sponsor has a business, then business IT return of last three years. Business is a good reason for you to come back to India if your business is reasonably big enough for you to come and join your father's business or family business. So business IT returns to know the turnover, the profitability will be important. You may also have to show your business proof, a business license or any other thing that you have to prove that this business exists or partnership deed. Fixed assets are also reasons of you coming back to India. So if you have your family relations, your fixed assets, all the reasons of you coming back to India. So prepare yourself for your US student visa to get US visa success. That's all from me for today. And the next video in the series, which will be on Thursday, will be about what documents you need to carry for your student visa. I'm going step by step closer to your dream of getting US visa. I'm sure you are following this video. I'm sure you have liked and subscribed this video. I'm sure you have pressed the bell notification so that you don't miss any of these videos. In case you have not, then do it now. Thank you. And Thursday, you know, I'll come out with my next video on what documents you need to carry for your student. Till then, bye.